A picture perfect afternoon in downtown Cincinnati as Cincinnati Christian University welcome, welcomes in sixth rank Lindsey Wilson into the Queen City. Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to the broadcast booth alongside the coach, Tony Bray. I am Rob Roberts, but before we get to the coach, Tony Bray, I had a chance to catch up with Cincinnati Christian head football coach, David Fulcher. All right, Coach, a tough 28-7 loss a, a week ago. How do you uh, start taking that next step in this process and turn some of those close losses into some victories? Well, our number one goal this week is to do your job. One play at a time, do your job, don't worry about nothing else. And if we can get our guys to do their job on every play, uh, I think we'll be successful. Now you're going up against a Lindsey Wilson team with a very dynamic quarterback, Dylan Be Beasley, completing 71% of his passes, 14 touchdowns, one interception. What can you do differently defensively to maybe to give him some different looks and confuse him a little bit and force him into some mistakes? Well, just, you know, get in his face. Uh, make him do some things that he, he normally don't do, uh, and that's just attack the football. If our defense can fly around the football and keep the ball in front of us, uh, make them drive. Make them drive a long field. We just want to be able to sustain drives on offense and keep them off the field. Now, last week uh, Nate Samansky did get some snaps, but you go back to Braden Wallendorf, who's doing a lot more than playing quarterback these days. What do you need to see from Braden under center to be able to take your offense to that next level? Well, just control the ball. You know, give them take what they give you. Don't try to force things. Um, if the pass isn't there, take off and run. Uh, protect yourself because we got him doing a lot today, but. I think, uh, I think he's up for the challenge, and, and we're going to see what's going to happen. Talk about your front five going up against Trent Mueller, a guy that really just tackles everything, averaging over eight tackles a game from that linebacker position. Yeah, it's not going to be easy. Um, we just got to get a hat on the hat, and, and wherever he is, block him, put two people on him, and uh, hopefully uh, we'll be successful. All right, what's the one key to tonight to cap off a good birthday week for you and pick up that first win against a six-ring team in the country? Well, just like I said, control the football on offense. Uh, take your time. Uh, eliminate the turnovers, uh, chase the football on defense, and just have fun. You know, 84 points was a whole lot that we gave up last year. Our goal is to cut that in half, and then hopefully we can put some points on the board to be right there with them. All right, I appreciate it, Coach. Right. Good luck this afternoon. All right, bud. All right, back upstairs. All right, and you heard Coach Fulcher talk about it, getting first downs and time of possession, because this Lindsey Wilson team, they do well. They score points, 50 uh, points a game, and a quarterback that doesn't make a lot of mistakes. Well, I think the clutch thing that he said in that entire interview is sometimes your best defense is a good offense. And so being able to some, to some, uh, sustain some drives um, and keep that ball, keep that offense off on the field is going to be huge today. Garner Wilson, we know he's going to get a bulk of the carries, but just 2.6 yards uh, per game. The team overall only averaging 90 yards uh, rushing per game. To do what coach wants to do tonight, you're almost going to need to double that output, get it into that 160 to 180 range, limit the touches of that Lindsey Wilson offense. Well, I think that maybe you want to get Brayton uh, Warmendorf a little bit more confident and throwing those little swing passes, those screen passes and things like that that are like running plays will help them as well, Rob. And then uh, defensively, you talk about uh, trying to minimize uh, Trent Mueller, a guy that when you're getting over eight tackles, a, a football game, especially that linebacker position, that quarterback, what can they do up front to kind of neutralize him and take him out of the football game? Or do you just go right at him? Yeah, I think that you have to go at him, but what you have to do is you have to send two offensive linemen at him. You're going to have to double team that defensive lineman to Mueller and then kind of clog, uh, 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 make a little uh, clog there, and the running back will have to cut off of that. The one thing that this CCU defense, a very good defense, you're still on the field a lot, that they're missing tonight. They're missing Jordan Meekins and uh, Shobi, especially Meekins, off that edge. That's two huge losses this week as uh, Meekins is in pro, uh, concussion protocol for a couple more days. Yeah, th that's one of the huge things right now in football, I think, on every level, is that uh, concussion protocol. Uh, and, and when you're missing key guys like that to get pressure, you have to make some adjustments and make them quickly. And we talk about... While they do complete 71% of their passes, they do have a, a run game as well as Blake Ingleton, 348 yards, a two-to-one run pass. But a lot of that is they've been so far ahead, they've had to run the football, but he's still getting seven yards a pop. So yes. that still brings that play action into play. And it's, then you have to start watching for your draws as well. Yeah, when you look at 71% completion percentage, you definitely have to go to the running game. And Blake Eagleton, 6.8 yards a carry. 
338 yards already on the season in just four games. That opens up your play action pass, makes it a lot easier for the quarterback to find open receivers. Well, the one thing, Lindsey Wilson, the first two weeks gave up just 10 points, but the last two weeks given up an average of 28 uh, points per game. And right now this defense is giving up almost 400 yards uh, per game, so there is some opportunities there for this offense, but it's all about execution, and it starts with the front five. Yeah, definitely, and then you have to, you can't uh, overlook this offense that we've been talking about. Lindsey Wilson's offense has picked up their defense, even giving up that 20 28 points a game and so if you can score today and then get that offense off of the field CCU will have a chance today Dottery in to kick off for Lindsey Wilson Anthony Brown back deep for CCU on a picture perfect low 70 degree day in the Queen City when they drew up Saturday afternoons this is exactly yeah what they drew up as the lefties. Right hands in the air, the left foot's in the ball. And this football game is underway as Brown fields it from the one yard line. And out to the 17, good pursuit there by Lindsey Wilson, that Blue Raider special team. And that's where Wollmendorf's gonna get his first snaps as he brings the offense on the field, 16 of 32, 150 yards, one touchdown. No interceptions on the season, just a 50% uh, passer. That's something you're going to have to prove on today. When you talked about that short passing game, keep your defense off the field. Yeah, definitely. You want to come out and get Warmendorf some, some confidence is what you need for him to have. Right off the bat, let's start throwing some screens, whether they're wide receiver screens, whether they're running back screens. It's just like running the football, and it'll get his confidence up. Gardner Wilson's at deep back. Wallendorf under center as CCU runs the first play. And quickly, just like that, they go play action. Excellent pocket for Wallendorf, who can also run the football. And right there, you see those legs. He's going to have a first down and more. And we talked about they want to get about two to three first downs per drive. Right there is a nice 14-yard uh, scramble. And you're talking about a guy in Wallendorf who already has 66 yards rushing this season. Well, it was one thing that Coach Fulcher talked about in the pregame interview. You know, when you don't see an open receiver, tuck that football, get what you can get, keep that clock moving. Good pickup of 14 on that opening play for Wallendorf. It's unfortunate. Oh, there it is. Play clock's under 20. Not used to this kind of sunshine. <laughs> As now we have it a stoppage by the uh, the official. The play clock to the right is not working. So if one play clock is not working, they will have to shut down. The, now they got it reset. Now it is turned on. I knew my eyes weren't deceiving me. Coach are asking for an explanation. And I think that play clock just went back out. And if they can't get one working, they'll just shut them both down. They'll keep it on the field. And then something you see a lot at the high school level, official puts his hands up in the air, uh, notifying that you have just five, five seconds to go on that play clock. Opening drive, 14.42 to go. Walmendorf on the only play, 14 yards. And what you hate about a stoppage like this is you get that momentum. You're able to pick up that quick four, uh, 14 yards. And next thing you know, now you're sitting for another 30 seconds as Walmendorf right back to the shotgun this time is Garner Harris. Straight up the gut, right there's a good push. Four more yards, exactly what you want to get, four yards a pop. Uh, this is exactly the way that they need to start this football game off. Uh, a good 14-yard run by Walmendorf, and then they come right back with the cross dive there. Another four-yard pickup. I think more importantly, though, especially, you know, you're an 0-4 uh, football team, but you get off to that good early start, and you get that momentum, and you get, you know, on the right side of things is – Garner Harris stays to the right of Wallendorf. And they're going to roll him to his right. He's got a receiver. Nice pickup out on the edge as he hits the big tight end. That's Mason Chapman. 
Good pick up a five more and right there, that third and manageable. Third one, your entire playbook's wide open, but you see using those legs of Wallman doors, rolling them out to each side. Well, I think that what you're seeing right now in this opening drive, Rob, is just what we talked about. Nice play action fake right there, and then a nice safe pass on an out route to the tight end to get Wallman Dorf an easy completion and get that confidence. Well, right here is where you could use somebody like Garner Harris, and all 205 pounds of that frame is Lindsey Wilson. Shows pressure off the edge on that quick pitch, and he is going to have a first down and a lot more. Out across the 50, into the 40, down to the 35, stretches down to the 33-yard line, able to hit that circle button, cut it to the outside. Nice pick up there, another chunk play by the CCU offense. Well, that was an excellent play, and that was all Ingleton on that play. He was actually hit in the backfield as we take another look at it here. He was actually hit in the backfield, did a great job of spinning off of that first tackler and then punching that second gear and picking up a nice game. Already two first downs for CCU on this opening drive. 12.55 to go in the opening quarter is... Garner Harris stays to the left of Wallmendorf as Lindsey Wilson shows blitz off that edge. Another good pocket. Once again, he's got Williams. And right there's five more yards down to the 28. You talked about those short passes earlier. It's almost like you were in the, in the coach's room. <laughs> and just like that, he's two for two, 10 yards. Hey, you have to do some things sometimes um, to get confidence in your players. You talk about mojo in football games, Rob. And mojo is nothing more than confidence. When you're playing confidently you play faster you play harder and you play a lot better and that's what you're seeing in this opening drive right here by ccu chapman already with two catches but now you start creeping those safeties up now you can start using that more of a vertical passing game as second down five womendorf back under center and they're going to try that quick hitter to austin bowling and that ball's out and lindsey wilson has it and that's joe lewis and Lewis is going to take that fumble, 66 yards to the house. No flags on the play, and that's just one of those things that happened during a football game. Fullback counter is what they wanted to get off right there. Running back lost the football, and things turned pretty quickly. What started off as a very promising drive, Austin Bowling right there, you see it. But that's why you got to keep that ball tight to the chest. You saw the swim move, ball pops out, took a nice bounce. And just like that, the Blue Raiders pick up the fumble recovery, does Lewis. And just like that, Lindsey Wilson has a 6-0 lead pending the PAT. And now, on that quick snap, they get the two-point conversion. And Lindsey Wilson, off to the start that they were looking for, 8-0. But still a lot you can take out for that CCU offense. They were able to flip field position, push it down the field. Just very unfortunate, especially with a guy in Austin Bowling has been really reliable. Well, we talked about that uh, Lindsey defense and the fact that they've been giving up 28 points on average per game uh, the last few weeks of the season. Here they come with a big turnover here to stop a big drive that was going on for uh, CCU. A lot, they did it both vertically and, and then also in that run game as well. You're able to get Wallendorf going uh, through the air and on the ground. You got Garner Harris going. You're able to get Chapman going across the middle. And anytime you get that passing game going across the middle, really opens up your entire offense. Well, it was just one play that actually stopped this drive. And as an offensive coordinator, you want to get in early and see what you can have success doing. They're running the ball well. The short passing game is working. No problem. There's just one turnover. You can pick that up. Well, every game, you know, ebbs and flows of a football game. You got to deal with adversity. It's just like life. It's how do you respond exactly. to that adversity that you just have, especially the way that they were uh, moving the football down the field. As Doherty, the 220-pound sophomore, puts his left foot into this one, fielded by the up back. Tion Walker and it's going to be good starting field position there for CCU at the 24 yard line as they look to build on that momentum minus the last play. Uh, what's going to be interesting right here is how they deal with that adversity that you were just talking about moments ago Rob. They have to stay confident. They know that they can throw the football. They're running the ball well today. The offensive line has controlled the line of scrimmage up to this point. And so you've got to dig deep and come out with points here. You can always tell how well the offensive line's playing when the guy doesn't get touched for three to four yards uh, down the field. As Gardner Harris will remain the deep back, Christian Williams split out top. And now they're going to pitch to that far side, trying to get him the edge. 
And right there, you see that 205 pound frame only picked up two yards, but still was able to make something out of nothing. Well, when you're running that sweep out of that single backfield set, you don't have that lead blocker coming around to lead you around to pick up that, uh, that open uh, linebacker there. And that's why that was a short game. Settle set up, we'll call it second down eight, ball 27 yard line. As they go right back to that shotgun, trips near side and nobody out top. Chapman, the tight end, split to that side. As Garner Harris, and this time he is hitting the backfield but able to fall forward for two more. It sets you up in that third and six. Still, still a lot of options here. One of the base plays in that spread offense that, it, that most of these colleges and high schools run right now is that cross dive. A lot of times they, they trap that with that guard to open it up. CCU going straight ahead and zone blocking that, not being able to uh, to make much uh, much success there. Chapman checks out. Of course, he already has a couple tackle or a couple receptions over the middle, two catches for 10 yards on that on that last play. Jason Cameron out of Columbia, Tennessee, able to get the tackle as Walmendorf's going to keep it himself. He's got the first down and more showing. That burst ability out across the 40 to the 42-yard line. Nice pickup of 13 yards, and Wallendorf already with 29 yards rushing in the opening quarter. Right, it looks like that was the design quarterback keep here as we take a look at it here. He's going to get the snap, and he's going to just pick his way to an opening there and have a, a nice uh, gain there. But once again, the push up front also helps you in that third and six. Defense is going to be dropping back, but also able to follow his blocks. Nice, nice run there. Not, not too bad for a quarterback. <laughs> and the offensive line, as we talked about moments ago, getting a good push at the start of the play. They go right back to that I formation, and it looks like it might have been a busted play, but Wallendorf's going to have the first down, and he's going to pick up 12 more yards down to the 48. Looked like he was looking for the fullback. Nobody was home, but that was smart. Just go ahead and turn forward, see what you can get, and there was a hole there. Yeah, it looks like that was a, a schedule as we take another look at it right here. Looks like the call was a, a read option. The running back may have gone the wrong way, um, and Warmendorf just doing an excellent job of making something out of nothing. Pickett checks in. He splits near side with Christian Williams. Williams in that slot. Garner remains that deep back behind Walmendorf. Straight up play action. This time, Lindsey Wilson able to get some pressure. Walmendorf still looking down the field, and he's going to get inside the 40, down to the 39. Another seven-yard pickup for Walmendorf. Uh, as a coach, it means so much when the uh, quarterback listens to you. And as Coach Fulcher talked about in pregame, when you don't see something, Rob, you've got as a quarterback, you make that decision to tuck the ball and run. And it looks like that's what Warmendorf is doing today. Plays need to be made. He's making them right now. Seven more yards down to the 40. And once again, CCU moving the ball at will, looking to cap off this drive as Pickett splits bottom. Williams out top, Garner is that deep tailback, and Garner's gonna have the first down, still churning them legs down to the 36. They give him four more yards, that's the first thing we talked about at the top. He averages 2.6, we need him at four yards plus, and every time he's touched the ball, with the exception of once, he's gotten four yards plus. Well, it's like I talked about moments ago, it's the difference between running a single back and running a dual back, where you have that lead blocker that can pick up that linebacker. What we saw right there was an excellent lead block by the fullback, gave him that extra uh, yard or two to get that first down. But the more you see that, that more that's gonna open up that play action down the, the down the road as well as Stroud in a tailback. Actually, that's Bryce Kelly. And they're going to go play action. Right on cue. Nice out of the backfield. Able to hook up with his fullback, Nick Cox. That's a nice six yards. But every time, hey, if you're running the ball four yards a pop, linebackers got to respect that they got sucked in. Well, what they're not doing as we take another look at it here is they're not allowing Warmerdorf to take deep shots down the field just yet. They're keeping that short passing game going, having success, building that confidence so when they take that deep shot down the field, he'll make a play. Officially, gain of five as we're under 7.30 to go in the opening quarter. Pickett split down bottom. And they're going to do that quick pitch once again. This time, he might have lost about two yards back out. Was Kelly. 
Back out to the 33. Really, that's the first negative play of the night so far for CCU. Going to step third down, we'll call it about seven. Yeah, and this is where CCU does not want to be. They're off schedule right now. You've got a third and seven. Definite passing situation here for Warman Dog. But we saw that last time they ran that quarterback keep. And especially if you're playing this as a four down territory, you pick up four or five yards. Because you're kind of on that borderline, especially with your kicker out. Garner now back in at tailback as Kelly checks out. Play action, nice pick up on that blitz on the edge, but able to come over on the other side was big 53, Damani Jenkins, a sophomore out of Glasgow, Kentucky, via Berrien County High School. Garner Harris picked up the blitz on the right side, but as you're going to see coming off the edge, opposite side, good rush there by Jenkins. Yeah, and, and like I talked about moments ago, the play action doesn't work as well when they know that you're throwing the football. Those defensive ends are able to come and do what they do best, and that's rush the quarterback. So now Walmendorf is taking over the punting duties with Billy Real out. Fourth down. Call it 15, trying to pin Lindsey Wilson in. A low line drive kick is going to go out of bounds at the 23 yard line as we're going to get our first look at Dylan Beasley. 71 of 100 on the season. That's 71% for 1,035 yards. And the better stat, 14 touchdowns, just one interception. Behind him, he has Blake Ingleton, 348 yards rushing on the season. That's seven yards a pop to go along with four touchdowns. But anytime you got a 14 to 1 touchdown interception ratio, you know you're doing something right. Yeah, you can't forget about those receivers. He's got four receivers right now, Rob, that are averaging more than 12 yards per reception. As Beasley's in that shotgun formation. And Rago right up top, and they're wasting no time, and he's got a receiver out on the edge, and that's a nice individual effort out along the far side. Charles, to Charles Gaines. Gaines. Yeah, great concentration on the play. The coverage actually wasn't that bad. And they're going to call it incomplete. Looked like he caught it from our angle. But they're going to rule that incomplete. It's coming back, and it's going to be second down, 10 to go. Well, let's take another look at it right here. From our angle, it, it appeared that he caught that pass. Again, not bad coverage. Right there, they came out the end when he was rolling over, so they're saying that he didn't make he didn't the completion. Finish, yeah, he didn't finish the completion. But you got to give credit to the DB there, able to keep his hands in there and keep it live. So that'll set up a second down, 10 to go. Now Ingleton's going to get his hands on it, and he's going to be stood up. Going to pick up about four yards, but that's going to keep him in third down and long range as Burke and company, or uh, Thomas Burt, was able to wrap him up. Uh, big for CCU right now defensively to be able to get off of the field. But on that first throw, you, you saw why Beasley does what he does. That was a beautifully, beautiful thrown ball down the left sideline, but it's also easy when you can step into a throw when you have a pocket like that as well. Beasley standing at his own 25. Big third down six coming up for the Eagle defense. And this time he hits Jones out along the far side, Gaines. And this time he holds on to it, gets up, picks up seven, just enough for a first down. Ran to the sticks, turn around, ball was delivered. Yeah, that's what you call the old sticks play right there on third and long. Receiver just goes, turns himself around right there at the first down marker. Great pass, first down. Horton. Out on coverage. And they're going to do that quick hitter to the near side. Able to break a couple tackles. Right there is where you miss Shoby and company as he's able to take a four-yard gain and turn it into nine yards. Did Ingleton, the 6'1", 220-pound junior tailback. Uh, you've got to wrap the ball carrier up, and that's just a, one of those situations where he did a lot of spinning, <laughs> kept his feet moving, and was able to pick up nine yards on the play. Of course, out of Queens. Second down, one to go. Extra tied in. Hey, hey, hey. 
And they go right back to Ingleton. He's gonna have the first down and more. Jags carriers down to the 49 yard line. And now to be a fresh set of downs for Lindsey Wilson. Yeah, Ingleton appears to be one of those running backs, Rob, that's like an old Eddie George type of a guy. You see him pick up four yards, and then those four yards become eight yards. The eight yards becomes 15 yards. And by third quarter, the defense is too tired to tackle. When you got that 220-pound, really low center of gravity as well as Dunn checks into the backfield, and they're going to play action him. Beasley wants to, to go up top for Staller, and that's incomplete. And that ball was uncatchable. That's why you're not getting the flag. Yeah, it sounds like the fans would like to have a pass interference call there, but Beasley actually got that over his head that time, and, and it wasn't a catchable pass. Plus, at the college level, you don't have to snap your head, head back around as long as you don't hit that receiver, but you also have to use some common sense in, in regards to a ball is catchable or not, but you see why Lindsey Wilson likes to go deep. As Dunn remains in the backfield, splits left at Beasley, a very pedestrian one of three to start the football game. Good draw play to Dunn over the left side. And he's going to be stood up. He's only going to pick up three yards. And that'll set up a third down and seven as we have a CCU Eagle down on that side. Looks like he jammed up that left arm. McNeil Jr. and company out there. Yeah, not sure exactly what happened, but there was a nice pileup of, uh, of players there, and a lot of times. Well, as soon as he stuck his head in, he went straight down. Yeah. So hopefully it's just one of those shoulder stingers, because you know any time you get hit right in between that shoulder and that collarbone, you kind of just. Well, it looks like they're doing some work on his knee. Maybe his uh, knee is some part of his leg right now. But a big third down coming up as we hope every, er, everything is all right. But big third down to get off the field. Your offense really has uh, moved the ball really at will. It's just that turnover is a difference in, the, in this football game, not letting that number six ranking come in and, and phase CCU at all. I mean, you're talking about a team that played uh, t five of the top teams in the country last year. They've already played number three, Reinhardt, uh, this year. They have uh, no problems uh, uh, playing the best of the best. So to them, this is just another. And of course, they also want a little revenge as they went down to Lindsey Wilson last year, lost 80, 84 to nothing in that game, in a, in a game that they they lost a, a couple guys as well due to injury. Well, the way the CCU has come out uh, in this football game, you would never believe that Lindsey Wilson is ranked top five. They're coming out and they're playing as if both teams are top five. And CCU's playing with a lot of confidence, and that's what you have to do anytime you're playing a team that's ranked and you're not. Hey, it's, it's, it's all about being able to, to get first downs and – Sometimes your best your best defense is a good offense, and we're seeing that right now. I mean, you're looking at a defense that, that's been on the field a lot, a lot this year, and if you're able to keep that defense fresh and you're able to keep that pass rush, and a, a defense that, that currently right now against the pass uh, ranks uh, number five in the country, giving up just 151 uh, yards a game. This defense, number 42 in the country on third down, uh, as uh, uh, opponents only convert 38%. You're able to keep those guys fresh. Those numbers are going to get even better. Also, 31st in the country, six sacks per game. You're able to keep that defense fresh. That's a big Definitely. difference in the fourth quarter. Definitely. As we still have a eagle down along the far side. But we speak about that, that six sacks per game, and when we get back, that's going to be a big key here. Third down, seven to go. But with a guy that's as accurate as Beasley is, even though he's just one for three, uh, on the day so far, it's one of those do you or don't you in regards to send a blitz? Do you try to force them a little bit or do you sit back in coverage, give them the time to try to pick you apart? It's kind of a, you know, darn if you do, darn if you don't, don't scenario. Well, the, the one thing that I've seen from Beasley here in this first drive by them is that he doesn't hold the ball a long time. You know, he's got a quick release, one of those Tom Brady type of releases where he knows where he's going with the ball at the snap. So he's not holding on the ball on to the ball long enough uh, right now for CCU to call a lot of blitzes. Of course, that's what happens when you know you got a senior quarterback. You know he's been there, done that, he's seen things, and then that really helps. And you're looking at a CCU roster that 95% of this roster is is just freshmen and sophomores. So you're, you're still on that learning curve. Uh, we talk about and I, I, and I talk about it on Friday nights as, you know, as as I do Oak Hills, and and they're kind of going through, through the same thing uh, with a turnover and then. 
you know, you bring in new coaches. You hear you got a new program. Winning is a process, and you have to learn how to win. Sometimes Definitely. getting over that hump, but once you get over it the first time, it gets easier. But the first time is, is what you have to learn. Yeah, and I think that that's what CCU is going through right now. After that first big win, I think they'll be fine. Um, but they're doing a great job right now, you know, with two minutes and 59 seconds left in the first quarter. Uh, Lindsey Wilson has not scored offensively, uh, so the defense should be proud of themselves right now. As you see, definitely a lot of pain, not being able to put any pressure on that lower extremity. Anthony Cummings, number 57, appears to be the injured player. And you hope that's better than what it looks like. But sometimes that's one of those you see one of your brothers go down and kind of kind of uh, kicks you in the backside a little bit to <laughs> say. Big third down, seven coming up for the CCU defense. 2.59 to go in the opening quarter. Beasley just one of three in the early going on the season, a 71% completion passer. Now the Eagles are going to show blitz up top, and here they come off the edge, pressure up the middle. He's going to chuck it deep. He's got gains, and he is into the end zone. Touchdown, Lindsey Wilson, Charles Gain out of Lloyd Memorial High School right across the river in Florence, Erlanger. And that was a nice 46-yard strike right on the money, able to get beat Horton in single coverage, and Horton, one of the better defenders in the country. Well, as I talked about moments ago, Beasley is one of those quarterbacks who knows where he's going with the football before the snap. And we saw him step up in the pocket and roll a little bit to his left to give himself enough space to make that deep pass. And they're going to do that quick hitter going for two again. And that ball's out. CCU has it. And that's the conversion's no good. So our new score after a 46-yard pitch and catch gains from Beasley. And Lindsey Wilson now takes a 14 to nothing lead. Gains the uh, leading receiver for uh, Lindsey Wilson with uh, 15 catches, 189 yards coming into today's game. You can add to that. But from a defensive side, for you had him right where you wanted him. Third down, long to go. They brought pressure off the edge. But give the Blue Raiders credit. They were able to pick up that blitz, give him that extra second. And Gaines was able to beat Horton in one-on-one -on -one coverage. Yeah, I talked moments ago about how quickly Beasley gets the ball out of his hands. Well, in that particular play, he held the ball for a little bit, wasn't pressured much at all, and was able to connect. So you hate to say early in a football game, but down two scores, 244 to go offensively. You don't want to put too much pressure on yourself, but you almost need to get, get some points here if you're the Eagles. Well, the Eagles are doing an excellent job offensively. They, they've just got to finish a drive. I think once they finish the drive, we could potentially have a football game here. Doherty toes it up at the 35. Tion Walker standing inside the 10. Low line drive kick, and that's gonna go out of the back of the end zone, and that's gonna bring the ball back out to the 20 yard line as we'll get our third look at Walmendorf and company. Really, besides the fumble, like you said a few moments ago, this offense, just they've been moving the ball rather effectively. Yeah, and they've had decent field position uh, starting right around the 20-yard line on their first three drives now, and they've moved the ball very well from the 20 to the 20, Rob. We talked about we might see Samansky a little bit at quarterback after we saw him last week, just one of one of 14, but with the way Walmendorf's running this offense, it, you'd be hard-pressed to, to kind of take him out of that rhythm right now as they come out in that trip set. Garner Harris split left of Walmendorf, and now we have flags. Now they were just moving the ball to, yeah. to, 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 dead, to dead center. No flag on the play, just ball resetting position. the football. As Gardner-Harris split left, Walmendorf. 
from the 25. Good pick up there by Garner Harris on his blind side. Walmdorf's now going to tuck it, and he's going to get out of bounds, pick up of eight yards. But how about Garner Harris instinctively turned around, Walmart saw the edge rusher coming opposite side, able to buy his quarterback enough time to pick up eight more yards. Doing a great job right there on the uh, speed rollout by Warmendorf. And now we have a Blue Raider, not to interrupt you, down right here, right in front of the CCU bench. we got a Blue Raider down at the 33-yard line. Yeah. He was actually giving chase on Warmendorf there. Not sure exactly what happened on the sideline as he tried to run him down. Those are some of the most, when you're running out of bounds like that as a quarterback, uh, especially with how much they're protecting him these days, you got guys trying to ease up, and then you just got bodies rolling as big old number 93 is able to get off under his own power. Clay Chase Dean, the sophomore, checking in at 260 out of Carlisle High School just up the road in Ohio. Yeah, Chase Dean looks like he may have injured his arm and was able to get up on his own accord and then run off to the sideline there. Pickett split out top, Garner Harris, the D-back, second down, we'll call it two for the Eagles. And Walmendorf's gonna have it, he's gonna push the pile, give him three more yards out to the 36. He saw that option play, they faked the belly dive with, uh, with Austin, able to roll out to his right. And Wallendorf with his legs again, able to get another first down. Yeah, running that read option right there, and it's difficult for the linebackers to actually see who has the ball. Is the quarterback putting it out and keeping it, or is he giving it to that fullback right there? Warmendorf able to get enough for a first down. Not something you see a lot more. A lot of teams do four or five wide. Let's, let's sling it all around is Christian Williams now splits out top, pick it to the bottom. Garner Harris, that deep back. Chapman at tight end. And now he's got Chapman right there out across the 45, 48-yard line. But once again, a clean pocket for Wallendorf. Now when you're running the ball real well, play action works for you, short passing game works for you, and once again, they're nearing midfield. The one thing I do like is they're rolling them out to each side. They're letting them throw across his body. So that way that defense can't say, well, if he rolls left, he runs. If he rolls right, he passes. Well, one of the successful things about Dylan Beasley, his counterpart, is that he, he's picking through and he's, he has four receivers that he's throwing the ball to. And if they can give Warmendorf that type of receiving core, I think he'll be fine. Garner Harris remains that D-back, and it's going to be a free five yards. They made contact. You guys, you got to throw the flag. He, 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 it wasn't like his head came across, the whole body came across. That's a free five yards. Well, you don't want the defenders to come unabated to the quarterback. Things tend to go wrong when that happens. Anthony Cummins, the guilty party, the sophomore out of Louisville Mail. You talk about a powerhouse in, in, in Southern Kentucky. Call is off sides on Lindsey Wilson, a five yard penalty. Of course, one of the things that uh, Cincinnati Christian does is they get their name out there more just their second year. If you can recruit Cincinnati and, and Northern Kentucky with the athletes that they, that they have here, speaking of, uh, of Louisville, you know, you're able to put a kind of a cast net around this city. You'd be surprised what you'll be able to do on the field. Garner Harris remains that deep back, and they're going to give him that quick pitch, and he's going to be thrown down for a loss back out to the 50, a loss of three. Make it a loss of two, back out to the 49. Second down, seven to go from there. Close to a second fumble right there. They're going to mark him as down right there at the 49-yard uh, line. And so a break right there for CCU. You know what happens? You start doing that, you, you start carrying that ball to class. <laughs> you remember the movie, The Program. Yeah, I definitely do. <laughs> One of my favorites. <laughs> I think that ball is still bouncing in that class as uh, Christian Williams checks out limping. So Pickett splits out top. And there's balls loose. Walmendorf hops on at the 50. He was going to hand it off to the tailback, but the tailback wasn't ready. Nick Cox, the fullback, miscommunication there. Very fortunate Walmendorf was able to hop back on it. And that's going to be third down and eight. After, on, after the, the first play, which started at a first and five, now all of a sudden you're backed up into a passing situation for the Eagle offense. Uh, Warmendorf being uh, Johnny on the spot right there, keeping his head up and watching the play develop, saw the ball come out and was able to get back on it. And that'll do it for the first quarter here from Robert Taft High School, downtown Cincinnati, as Lindsey Wilson's on top of CCU by a score of 14 to nothing. You, when you see that score there, you think, oh, 
David dominating this game, but it's really been, been the opposite. You had a fumble return for a touchdown and a, and a long third down and seven conversion for a touchdown. But if you look at the stats, CCU's on the stat sheet. At the end of the day, the only thing that matters, though, is the scoreboard. But CCU's moved the ball up and down the field all three times they've had it. Uh, this is a, a lot uh, better game than what the score is showing right now. Time of possession has to be dominated by CCU at this point. But again, they, they've had the ball three times. They've come away empty on two of those occasions, working on their third drive right now. I think that if they can put some points on the board here in the second quarter, this game could potentially change. But with that time of possession, if you're able to keep going that quarter after quarter, those four or five yard gains start turning into 15, 20 yard gains as well, especially not a cloud in the sky. It might be a full 72, but sitting in that sun, still sitting in the sun. Big third down eight coming up for the Eagle offense. Garner Harris checks back in at tailback. Cox checks out, trips to the bottom. Play clock whistled in. And now it, we might have a false start as Garner Harris flinched in the backfield, but was he drawn off by the defense? I think that's going to go against the offense. And it is. Harris did flinch, but it was after somebody jumped in the neutral zone, but sometimes that's more of an offensive line in regards to the jumping in the neutral zone. Yeah, I don't think you're going to get away with that play and running back. So now that makes it third down. And 13 to go. Now Wallendorf's going to have to go a little bit more vertical. Trips to the bottom. Single out top is Pickett. Garner Harris remains that tailback. First play, quarter two. Wallendorf rolls to his right. And it's going to be a straight keep out to the 47 yard line. He's going to pick up two yards and it's going to be punt time for that Eagle offense. Yeah, Warmendorf made the decision to run the ball, I think, a little bit too quickly that time. When you're in the third and 13 situation, you've got to want to make a play, keep your offense on the field, keep the chains moving. And I think prematurely that time he decided to run the football. Give him three yards out to the 48 to be fourth down and 10. And not so much here in a fourth down and 10, but when, you're, when your kicker's your punter, you know, your, your defense is going to have to respect that a little bit because that really does keep that run pass option in as Lindsey Wilson has everybody on the line but the return that guy. As Quentin Brown's back deep to receive the freshman as Walmandorf hits this out of bounds and Lindsey Wilson is going to have excellent starting field position. Yeah, it looks like that might have gone out of bounds right around the 30-yard line. So you're going to give Lindsey Wilson their second drive in really good field position. So they'll start this drive, first and 10, 31 yard line, 14-20 to go in a half, 14 nothing in favor of the six ranked Blue Raiders. Beasley, two of four. 52 yards and a touchdown. Of course, 46 of that came on one play as they're trying to set up this screen pass. Able to do so. Nice open field tackle there by McNeil Jr. But Quentin Brown, the freshman out of Lafayette High School down in Lexington, was able to pick up six yards, seven yards. Looked like it could have been a lot more. Yeah, it would have been a lot more uh, had it, the uh, corner not came up and made the uh, great open field tackle, holding him to just a seven-yard gain. Now checking into that CCU defense into the backfield. That's Daquan Render, 21. McNeil Jr. split out top, 23 for that CCU defense as Horton checks out. Good pocket again. This one's thrown just behind him, and Beasley's been kind of off the mark tonight, to say the least. Just three of six in the early going. I think that that says volumes for what CCU's defense is able to do right now. Um, for some reason, it looks like Lindsey feels like they can throw the football today, not trying to run it and establish their running game and play their passing game off of the running game. So they're having to throw the ball. Uh, Beasley is throwing the ball a lot more and trying to force passes more than I think he normally does. Third down three coming up. We'll call it third and four. As Engel has it, he's not going anywhere. He's going to be stood up right there at the 39-yard line, and CCU gets that three and out that they needed by the defense. Excellent job by the CCU defense, able to get off of the field, get that offense back the football. I know you might want to go for it, actually, Zach Meisel on that last carry, but you got to punt this football. 
It looks like they're going to go for it, Rob. Wow. On fourth and two. Fourth and two on your own 39-yard line as they come right back with Ingleton at tailback. CCU with everybody around the line of scrimmage. And they're going to give it to Ingleton, and he is going to be east. He's got it. Right at the marker, he just had to get just across the 40, and I think he's got it, and he does by the nose of the football. That's a gutsy call there by the Raiders. Yeah, at this point in the game, just leading 14 to nothing, that was really a gutsy call and showing a lot of confidence in his offensive line. Chris Oliver, the head coach. Roll the dice, this time they, they come up right. 12.42 to go in the half. Fresh set of downs, Blue Raiders. Beasley rolls to his right. He's got a good time. Now pressure off the edge, throws it away. But good corner blitz action coming off the far side by Marble. Well, we talked earlier about how well Garner Harris for CCU is blocking out of the backfield. Uh, and we just saw the difference between the two. Roll, speed rollout, same play. Eagleton CCU able to, yeah, able to get some pressure. Second down, 10 to go. Beasley, just three of seven in the early going. And they're gonna get that quick hitter to Ingleton, trying to get to the near side. Stiff arms his way to the 46 yard line. Daquan Render able to step up, make the play, and it's going to be another third down and five to go, this time with the 46. And you have to believe if they went for it the last time, this is going to be four down territory, <laughs> which totally changes on how you're going to play this. Well, I think a lot of times you go for it that one time and you kind of breathe that sigh with relief when you get it. I don't think they do it twice in one drive. Now we have timeout CCU. That timeout comes with 12-14 to go in the half, but another big third down coming up for this Eagle defense. Uh, they're playing exceptionally well right now against the run. The confidence is building. So it's gonna be interesting to see uh, what Lindsey comes out with to try to, to get this first down. From a defensive uh, standpoint, you know, they've tried to bless it and they've tried to, to sit back, maybe, maybe a zone blitz. Like what can you change up here? Beasley, not his normal self today, just three to seven. That pressure coming off the edge is, is helping, especially without Jordan Meekins here, uh, the big pass rusher, big 14. But what can they do here? Maybe give him a different look. I, I really don't think that they have to change anything right now. I think that uh, Beasley has just made some plays when he needed to make them so far. He hasn't been sharp here in this first half. Uh, but I think that what they've done, Lindsey has, is they've tried to catch the Eagles off guard. They're throwing the ball on running plays. They're running the ball on passing plays. And it's kept CCU kind of at bay that way. Third down, we'll call it five. Ball needs to get just before the 49. 12-14 to go and a half, 14-0. In favor of sixth and ring, Lindsey Wilson. Looking to make another play on third downs. They did just a few plays ago. Beasley's in that shotgun. Ingleton split to his right. And we got another timeout by CCU as Horton checks back into the lineup and back-to-back timeouts. Uh, not going to be a very happy co Coach Fulcher. No, he is not happy as we take a look at him right now. He's very frustrated, not sure what he saw from his defensive formation, but he was not happy, and he was the one responsible for calling this timeout. Almost like an alignment issue. Is you show him point and what they should, what should, they should be, especially on a big third down. Gap responsibility huge, especially with a big back uh, like Ingleton. Yeah, being properly aligned with your defensive front is is night and it, it makes the difference in having success and failure on a third down and five situation. Coach Fulcher seeing that misalignment and taking another timeout. Still a lot of time to go in this game, but uh, another big stop. They, they, they got the three and out they wanted the last time before Lindsey Wilson decided to go for it on a gutsy call. They needed two. He got 2.1 yards, but another big third down. Another chance to get off the field and get your offense back onto the field. An offense that's really been moving the ball yardage-wise, just not point-wise. Third down, five. Ball just has to get just shy of the 49-yard line. 
Beasley wants to go, he wants to go up top. He's got a receiver, able to beat Horton off the edge, and he is going to be into the end zone for the Blue Raiders. Touchdown, Quentin Brown. And that's a 54-yard touchdown pass. This is the second touchdown pass that's been thrown by Beasley today on a third down uh, situation. I think that the defensive backs just have to understand football and you, you may want to put your heels right at that first down marker so that you're giving yourself a little bit of cushion. This is the second time that a receiver has ran past a defensive back on a third and long. And usually you don't see that on the Jay Horton side. That's, that's why you don't see the safety rotating over, but maybe that's something we see. Maybe more of that, that cover, too, is Daughtery on for the extra point to try to make this a 21 to nothing football game. Good snap, good hold, plenty of leg. And it's got our new score after a 54-yard pitch and catch. Beasley second of the night, his 16th of the season. That's now Lindsey Wilson, 21, and CCU nothing. A big drive coming up, though, for this CCU offense. Yeah, you talk about 21 points scored by Lindsey Wilson at this point, and, and it's really been a, a Cincinnati Christian type of an afternoon. They just haven't been able to finish offensively. And then a couple of major breakdowns uh, with the secondary um, have, have given up 14 points on the defensive well, side. Coach Fulcher talked about in the pregame about finishing and, and doing your doing your job. And, and that's that part of that process of, of learning how, how to win. But they've been in that position. But when you get in that position, you got to start capitalizing, sort of like the offense. You're moving the ball down the field, 30 to the 30. But you, now you got to get inside the 30, get some points points on the board. It'll be interesting to see if they try to maybe go back to Chapman across the middle. They had early success with what we did out uh, Walmart. He's already hit him three times. Uh, the success that I've seen by Beasley today, Rob, has been on deep balls. He hasn't had a lot of success throwing the short balls. He's had success throwing deep balls. And so the adjustment that has to be made by CCU's uh, secondary right now is maybe dropping those uh, those corners at back from maybe three to seven and giving them an opportunity to run uh, with the Lindsay receivers. Doherty puts his left foot into this one, a high end over end kick. Built it around the 15, falls at the 20 yard line. Had a chance at a return, did Walker, just unable to hold his feet and that's where CCU will start first down and 10 as Walmendorf remains a quarterback. Huge drive for this offense because at this point the defense has been on the field quite a bit. They're going to have to sustain the drive, allow the defense to actually catch their breath, get some water before they have to go back out. Well, we talked about getting those two to three first downs per drive, and they've been able to do that. The defense has been able to get that rest as the Officially marked the ball at the 20-yard line, 12.01 to go in the half. So they come out that three wide receiver set with duels to the bottom, prick it to the very bottom. And now they're going to give it to Garner Harris. Harris cuts it back over to the middle, and he's going to fall forward for about three yards. Back to Clay the, uh, Chase Dean able to wrap him up. Back to the cross dive right there uh, for Garner Harris looking for that trapping guard to give him a little leeway there, and he didn't get it. He was just able to pick up about three yards. Able to get three, four yards a pop, though. You're able to keep yourself in his third and manageable situations as Gardner Harris is going to stay at tailback. Chapman split out left, trips to the bottom as Larry Jackson Jr. checks into the slot. Wallendorf looks that way to Jackson, just underthrows him a little bit. Out in coverage, Michael DeLon out of Ballard High School via Louisville, Kentucky, the 210-pound linebacker, and it's going to be a third down, and we'll call it six. Yeah, Warmendorf seeing the receiver a little too late and tried to force it in once the defensive back had recovered from that. Did a good job of just throwing it low so if the receiver didn't catch it, no one would. Percy Roberts, as we saw hurt or earlier on crutches now, still on the field though, so it might just be a, a bruise. He's got ice wrapped around the knee, but good sign he's still here, here at the field. Hopefully it's just nothing more than just, just a bruise. As it's third down, six to go. Wallendorf with Garner Harris split to his left. Good pick up there by Harris. Wallendorf, and he just throws it away, and that, that's a fumble. He tried to get cute with it, but it was a forward pitch, and that's going to be a shovel pass, and that's going to be incomplete. That's a good call. That ball went forward when he pitched it. Yeah, they're actually calling that a shuffle pass look right there, which would make it an incomplete pass instead of a fumble. 
and it'll give CCU an opportunity to punt that football away. You can hear from up here the Lindsey Wilson say he didn't throw it, but if you make that pitching motion, the ball goes forward, that is considered an incomplete pass. Well, we're taking another look at it right here. We'll get a chance to see it. I'm not sure if that was a shuffle pass there, Rob. They call it a shovel pass. It's a shovel pass. <laughs> <laughs> Wommendorf in on the punt. Able to get this one away. A better kick now along the far side. It's going to take a CCU bounce. Now it's going to take a Roy McElroy checkup at the 46. And with exactly 11 minutes to go, the CCU defense comes right back on the field after a three and out. Excellent field position for Lindsay here to start their next drive outside the 45 yard line. Um, CCU's got to come up with a stop here. Angleton split right now of Beasley, the senior quarterback, already thrown two touchdowns so far tonight of the 46. And 54-yard variety, he said Ingleton's going to take that pitch, and he's got a lot of running lanes. Inside the 35, down to the 30-yard line, and exactly what you saw there, they were looking for that pass. Trevor Williamson able to track him down. That delayed pitch got the linebackers and everybody out of the box, and that was a lot of run. That was a big first big run of the night for this Blue Raider offense. Right back to the line. How about this? Five wide receiver set. CCU showing blitz, and here they come, but that leaves a wide open receiver, Todd Smith, and he walks into the end zone for the touchdown, Beasley's third touchdown pass. Yeah, the first time that we've seen them go to a no huddle today, and they were set and ready for this one. They lined up in, the, in an empty backfield, as we'll take another look at it right here. Beasley doing an excellent job faking the speed rollout to his right side this year and uh, this time and finding a wide open tight end in the middle of the field. But what you saw there when you blitz your linebackers and everybody else, you're going to leave the middle of the field and give him credit. He found a wide open Smith a little high, but at the end of the day, the tight end did what he was supposed to do and catch the football. As Doherty in on for the extra point, plenty of leg, and it's good. Our new score after Beasley's third touchdown pass of the night, his 17th. Of the season, Lindsey Wilson 28 and CCU nothing. 10.37 to go in the half. Just been a big place for Lindsey Wilson that first half. That's all it is. That, that's all it's been. I, you know, I talked about it moments ago. He, Beasley has three touchdown tosses now, all of which more than 15 or 20 yards. 46, 54, and 31. They've been opt uh, opportunistic. Easier said than done. Late Friday nights get the best of you sometimes. <laughs> Beautiful day though for football. Another good solid crowd here in downtown Cincinnati. As you get the skyline right to your right. Good, great setup here at Robert Taft High School. Will Hillard Sargell Stadium. Lindsey Wilson with a nice fan base. They travel exceptionally well. Daughtery for the fifth time tonight puts a high end over end kick fielded by the up back. Return there by Walker and going to be decent starting field position once again. Every starting field position has been the 23 yard line, 1030 to go. And is this a chance you let Walmondorf keep doing things? Or do maybe you give Samansky or somebody else a few snaps? But Walmondorf has been, with the exception of the last shot, that's the first time they've been three and out all night. At this point, you still have an opportunity to make this into a football game. Walmondorf hasn't played poorly at all. I think that you allow him to continue to run this offense. And if nothing else, if, if you have a frame of mind that this one is getting away, then you start to maybe work on things for next week's game. There was a flag on the play that pushed the ball back to the 13-yard line. 10:30 to go in the half, and that's going to be put. That's going to push the Eagle offense into the worst starting field position of the night. Garner Harris, the deep back. Christian Williams checks back into the lineup. He's down to the near side. Pickett split out top. 
and it's going to be a straight quarterback keep once again they fake that dive to austin rolling or bowling and it's going to be a pick of give him seven yards out to the 20. that's the old midline play there warmendorf's helmet coming off and he's trotting to the sideline and now we're going to get nate samansky he's going to check into the lineup one of 14 on the season, just seven yards. All came in a game a week ago in that 28-7 road loss. Garner Harris is going to be split right. Actually now going to go I formation as Simi, Shimmy is going to be under center. And it's good. And he dropped the football. Lindsey Wilson saying they have it on the 20. And that's the one thing. And they're going to say it's third down, but that's the one thing you see when you bring in a new quarterback, that center center exchange. Yeah, quarterback to center exchange is so vitally important, and it's bad because the second stringer doesn't really get a chance to take first string snaps in practice. So you're going to have that mix match there uh, until he gets comfortable back there. Jackson Jr. and Tion Walker check into the lineup. Now Walmondorf checks back in. Big third down, three coming up for Walmondorf in the offense. Garner Harris split to his right, 9.15 to go. Now Garner Harris going to be straight quarterback keep. He's got the first down out to the 24-yard line. and Big first down there for the Eagle offense. That excellent call that time. They go empty backfield. A design quarterback keeper off the left side, and he'll get enough for a first down. Much needed first down. Fresh set of downs out to the 24, give him four. He needed three. As we're under nine minutes to go in the half. Dual split out to the top. Williams in that slot. And they're gonna pitch at Garner Harris to that side, trying to negotiate his way through traffic. It said he's gonna st he stood up. For about a three yard loss, Romy Dukes, the red shirt freshman out of Birmingham, Alabama, via minor high school, wraps him up and it's gonna be second down and about 12 to go from the 22. And Lindsey Wilson going with 11 guys in the box, Rob, and now playing without a safety. Right back to Siminski, a quarterback. Shimmy checks back in, Wallendorf checks out. Not sure if maybe there's an injury there with Walmondor. Well, he's still standing next to the coach, so he may be going back out. Shimmy's going to be under center. Garner the deep back, second down, 12 to go. Now they're going to pitch it to the near side, trying to get the edge. And he's going to get it back to the original line of scrimmage, plus one, give him three, and it's going to be third down and nine to go for the Eagle offense. And Lindsey Wilson's defense does a great job of stretching that field out and using that 12th man being the sideline. Wallendorf now sitting on, on the bench. Looks like he's trying to garner his thoughts and it's gonna be a big third down here coming up for Shimmy and his offense. As we said, just one of 14 a week ago. Remains under center, garners that eat back. Two wide receiver set, they go play action. He wants to go across the middle and he's got Chapman. He's got the first down out across the 35 to the 36. Nice pitch and catch there. Looked in perfect rhythm there off the play action. Yeah, great job by the offensive line to give this young quarterback enough time to get the play action done and look across the middle and find uh, his receiver for a first down. Chapman with just four catches for 47 yards and a touchdown coming to this game. He's already got four catches in this first half. And more importantly, that's another eagle first down under seven minutes to go. As Williams split near side. Shimmy remains under center. Kelly to the eat back, and that's who they're going to give it to, trying to hop to the outside. Instead, he's going to be stood up. Nice pressure in the backfield by Trent Mueller. We talked about him at the top, the junior linebacker out of Nashville Christian down in Tennessee, able to shoot the gap, loss of two. I, we haven't heard much from him today, though. I think that the uh, CCU offensive line has done a good job up to this point keeping him in check. 
a guy we talked about getting over eight tackles uh, a football game. First time we've even seen him around the exactly. football. You talk about neutralizing him with that front five, and that's where that uh, fullback comes into play as well. Pickett split near side. Garner, the deep back. Nick Cox, the fullback. Shimmy's going to be right back under center. For the Eagle offense, second down, 12 to go, 5.50 to go in the half. And Shimmy didn't even have a chance. Good pressure off the edge. Joe Lewis, who had the fumble recover earlier, the 200-pound junior out of Louisville, and it's going to be third down and a long way to go, third down and 21. Yeah, as we take another look at it here. Didn't even have a chance. Didn't even have a chance. The linebacker, Joe Lewis, just coming right off of the outside, untouched, unabated to the quarterback. Talk about feeling pressure. He didn't even have a chance to roll out, and Lewis is all over him. Lewis now with the sack, a fumble recovery, and a touchdown. Not a, not a bad first half for a defensive lineman's dream. Not a bad game at all. And this is just the first half. Third down, 21 to go as we approach the five-minute mark. Three wide receivers set, pick it, split to the very bottom. As Shimmy takes that shotgun snap, good pocket, throws it to the near side. Well over the head of Larry Jackson Jr. Really wouldn't have mattered. It was just a three-yard out. And, but really on third and 21, not a lot of play calls that you can dial up. And it's going to be punt time now for CCU. And with Walmdorf out, wondering who the punter was going to be. And we just got that answer as Villarreal does come out to punt. Again, very curious as to um, what's going on with Walmdorf. Not sure if it's an injury or just what, but he's – actually even being replaced as the as the punter right now. But if, if you got to look, I mean, as many hits as he's taken using his legs, Definitely. those hits, they start to, to pile up as Lindsey Wilson is going to be coming with the pressure, and they almost got to Villarreal. Instead, it's fielded at the 45. Good pursuit there by CCU, but trying to get to the near side. Nice hesitation stop step by Quentin Brown, the freshman out of Lafayette, Louisville, Kentucky. And they're going to start this drive on the right side of the field at the 43-yard line. It's always nice to see a special teams play when you don't have a flag. Few and, and far between. <laughs> Definitely few and far between. That's the area uh, where you have your most mistakes in any football game on any level. 4.38 to go in the half, already 28 nothing in favor of visiting Lindsey Wilson. Of course, they're sixth rated in the country for a reason. A team comes in averaging 50 points. Uh, per game, the last couple of games, they put up uh, 60 points. Well, Rob, there was a flag on the play for unsportsmanlike conduct. Uh, we were talking about no flags on the play, but there happened to be one. Looks like it was declined. Um, the penalty was called on uh, Lindsey Wilson. CCU decided to decline it. They're going to whistle in the play, first down 10, ball 43 yard line. New tailback in as Williams checks in. He split left to Beasley. Trip wide receiver set. Now they bring motion back into the backfield. And that's who they're going to give it to was the motion man, TJ James, out of Owensboro High School. He gets it down to the 37, give him the 36. That's a pickup of seven yards. Set up a second down, three to go as we approach the four-minute mark. And he gets gets up a little gimpy there after the uh, seven-yard game. But what we're starting to see, Rob, is we're starting to see uh, this Lindsey Wilson offensive line start to take control of his line of scrimmage. Williams split left of Beasley. Now they're going to send him in motion to the far side, and they're going to do that quick hitter, and he is hitting the backfield. Nice defensive pursuit there by the Eagle defense. Ter Trevor Williams, Williams in along with Vince Hill, 91 and 93, and it's going to be third down and four to go as we're inside of four minutes to go in the half. Third down, call it five. Big third down coming up for this Eagle defense. 
Now they're going to do that quick hitter along the edge. And Hill again, able to get out on the edge, holding Williams to maybe a one-yard gain. And it's going to be fourth down for the Raiders. Yeah, it doesn't look like he even picked up a yard on that play. And yet, and still, Lindsey Wilson is going to go for this. This situation here, you kind of see you're in no man's land in regards to if you punt it in the end zone, it's net 17, too long for a field goal. But not on your own 39-yard <laughs> line, you got more than half a football. Beasley's in that shotgun, and they're going to get a free play here, and he's just going to throw it up. Out in coverage, trying to one-arm it, did gains, but that's just a free play. That's exactly what you're taught to do, and it's going to be a first down. And Beasley taking that shot, knowing that he had uh, a free play going there. He was going to get a first down regardless. Fresh set of downs, first and 10, ball 32 yard line, three minutes to go in the half. Beasley remains in at quarterback. Now he wants to go back up top, nobody's open, but good pocket, he's got all day. Now pressure, late pressure coming over. That should have been a hold on the edge. And wanting to flag was Trevor Williams and even threw his hands up at one point. Instead, it's gonna be a scramble of about three yards. It'll be second down, seven to go, 254 to go in the half. Excellent defense by the CCU secondary. They stayed disciplined that time, didn't bite on a play action fake there, stayed on their man, and Beasley had nowhere to go with the football. Second half, actually we'll call it eight, gave him two to the 30, 235 to go and counting. Williams remains that running back, and instead they're gonna do on the quick wide receiver round, jet sweep, and it's gonna come back. There was a hole, it is George Gregory, the freshman, out of Pulaski County High School, took that jet sweep, but it's gonna be for not. That's right around the area that you wanna call that jet sweep. That's an excellent call. Right there's a smart play by, by Gaines as uh, Javon Jones is starting to chirp. First thing he did, grabbed him, pushed him, just said, go to the sideline. But that, that's what you, you, wanna, you, you wanna see, the, the kid out of Lloyd High School here playing in front of his front of his uh, uh, family and friends, but that, that's a sign of leadership right there. Definitely. Why hurt yourself? You're already getting the 10 yards. Why add 15 exactly. on top of that, especially with the two unsportsmanlike conduct rule? So second down, call it 17, ball 40-yard line. Javen Jones split right at Beasley, who stands at the 45. And it's going to be that delay draw. And he's going to have a good chunk of yards down to the 28-yard line. Give him 12 yards. Give him 11 officially to the 29. And that's going to be third down and long inside of two minutes. He yeah, picked up all of the yards they uh, had taken away on the holding call and then picked up a yard or two. Williams checks back in at tailback as the Blue Raiders go four wide receiver set. Wants to go up top, hits a quick hitter right across the middle. Nice open field tackle. He doesn't make that tackle. And then Quentin Brown might have had another touchdown. Well, it's something that we haven't seen Beasley do a lot of today, and that's uh, throw the short pass. Looked very accurate that time to, to get that first down. Seems to be in a lot more rhythm here in the second half of the second quarter. 127 to go. A quick hitter to Williams along the edge inside the 15 down to the 13 yard line. He's gonna pick up about five yards. Lindsey Wilson likes that quick that quick pitch out there, uh, allowing that running back to get out there and out there in space with a with a defensive back. And that 220, 225 is a lot more than the 195 you're gonna see from a defensive back. We'll be interesting. Uh, we'll talk about a little bit more about the defensive changes that you can make on, on, on the CCU uh, the side of things. As we're at 120 to go in the half. Lindsey Wilson trying to build upon a 28 nothing lays. Beasley takes that shotgun snap and he's going to hand it off to his fullback and he's into the end zone. Touchdown, Blue Raiders. Xavier Ambernanthe out of Athens, Tennessee, able to walk it into the end zone and 
Abernathy extends the lead to 34 to nothing. Okay, full house backfield, and that's just a jailbreak as we take a look at it here. Just a jailbreak run here. He'll keep his feet moving. Actually moved out one of his own offensive linemen on the play. He wanted that touchdown bad. Doherty on for uh, the extra point, trying to make this a five-score game just before the half. Good snap, good hold, plenty of leg, and it's good. Our new score after a 13-yard Abernathy touchdown run. It's now Lindsey Wilson, 35, and CCU, nothing. Not a lot of time to go, 112. Is this one of those you just kind of just do a quick dive play, see if he busts for something long, or otherwise you kind of just sit on it. Let's go to the, let's go to the locker room and uh, Recruit and uh, come up with some uh, second half adjustments. Yeah, CCU has had a couple of first half injuries here, one being Warmendorf. Um, and, and so you want to get into the half and regroup, uh, it, you know, with, you know, it, it's less uh, harm done as possible. Of course, after this game, they travel down to CCU, down to Cumberland, Tennessee, before they come back home for Campbellsville, back-to-back -back home games with Campbellsville and Bethel. Both of those 130 kicks here at Robert Taft. Of course, coverage right here on Waycross as well as Williams takes the return out to the 22-yard line. Now we got some extracurricular chirping, and we have a flag back at the 35, an area of said chirping. Larry Jackson. And that's going to be a hold, and that's going to push CCU back uh, 10 more yards. That's going to put them down to the 12-yard line, so that conservative is going to get a lot more conservative here for the Eagle offense. Yeah, definitely. You want to stop the bleeding and get into the half. So you'll see maybe a, a carry or two, and then they'll go into the half uh, down 35. Of course, Lindsey Wilson does get first ball to start second half. 108 to go before we get to set half. Walmondorf back at quarterback. Garner Harris split to his left as a four wide receiver set comes out, ball 12 yard line, 68 seconds to go. Brings in motion as Garner Harris, and no is gonna take it out of his belly, keep it himself, spins his way back to the line of scrimmage, no gain. Looked like Garner Harris might have had something, a little holes uh, opening up. Walmondor takes the ball out of his belly, keeps it himself. Uh, it's that read option, and then the quarterback has uh, that option of whether to keep it or give it to the running back, and Warmendorf deciding to keep it on that play. Now we got a timeout. Lindsey Wilson is 49 seconds to go. I guess the way they see it, they get a pin deep, maybe get a pump block on and put this thing away and come out in the second half and start working on what you need to work on, but... I mean, at the end of the day, you're up 35 at the half. Really no need to be using timeouts to set up a pump block with 49 seconds to go. Right. I, I was sitting here trying to figure out why uh, we would get a timeout called by Lindsey Wilson at this point in this juncture uh, of the first half. See the nice camera shot there into that CCU huddle there by our way across. Team second down, 10 to go, 49 seconds to go in the half. Fresh off the Blue Raider timeout. Now Garner Harris splits out in motion. Walmondorf's gonna swing it out that way. Garner Harris out across the 15, 17 yard line. And they're gonna spend another timeout, their second timeout with 42 uh, seconds to go. And it's gonna be third down. Can't take them with you into the locker room, so they're going to use every every last second of this. Third down, five to go for here for CCU, which 
can kind of almost from here, at least on left hash, you can kind of use Wallendorf, roll him to his right, use that run pass option, see if he can't pick up the first down. Well, the thing that you want to do most of is use up as much of that clock as you possibly can, as you see that Lindsey Wilson would like to have the football back with at least uh, 15 seconds on the clock to maybe chuck it down the field once or twice, Rob. Well, also, you're still at the college level. Clock still does stop for first downs, which I'm still in favor of them getting rid of that rule eventually. <laughs> another discussion for another day, because at the high school level, I still like to see them go to the 40-second clock as well they currently do have the 25 but by the time you set it you'd be better off just running a 40. right whistle back in play walman doors under center garner harris the deep back in the eye formation picket split to the very bottom it's going to be a quick hitter garner harris trying to find his way through the hole and he's going to have a first down out to the 24 yard line not as quick to use that last time out all of a sudden. <laughs> 36 seconds to go. Yeah, huge to be able to get that first down on that uh, inside uh, sweep play. And that'll stop Lindsey Wilson from calling that final timeout. Ball 24 yard line should be the final play of the half. And it looks like they might not even need to, to snap, snap it again. They're pointing everybody to the locker room. And that'll do it for the first half here. Uh, a first half that CCU really controlled a lot of the stats, but the one that matters is the scoreboard. Really just big plays by, uh, by uh, the Blue Raiders. Yeah, it just took a little bit, I think, for the Red Raiders to get going. Uh, but we've seen now in this first half why they're ranked number six in the country. Quick uh, second half adjustments needed for CCU on each side of the ball. Well, I think defensively they've got to find a way to stop the big play. They've got to do their job and, and get off of the field. Offensively, they've got to find a rhythm somewhere. They started off throwing the ball pretty well. Um, they've given up pretty much on the running game. They've got to find something that they're successful at. And that'll do it for us here for the first half from Robert Taft High School. Once again, our score, it's Lindsey Wilson, 35, and CCU, nothing. Making sure you grab some snacks and some cold ones and join us for the second half as you're watching CCU football on Waycross TV. If I play sports for my school, I will have more confidence. I will get better grades. I will learn how to show good sportsmanship. I will be more physically fit. I will learn how to handle wins and losses in sports and in life. I will have more school spirit. I'll learn how to work together. I will learn to set goals and work to reach them. I'll make good decisions off the field. If I play sports for my school. If I play sports for my school. If I play sports for my school. I will learn how to be a leader. the coach Tony Bray I'm Rob Roberts at a score at the half it's Lindsey Wilson 35 and Cincinnati Christian nothing as we see some of the first half stats Beasley a quarterback just six of ten but he threw for 155 yards and three touchdowns well, we talked about it quite a bit in the first half they haven't sustained the drive uh, all day talking about uh, Lindsey Wilson they've hit big plays uh, to account for the uh, 35 points that they have right now, Rob. On the other side is the team, CCU 6 of 9, Wallendorf 5 of 7, just for 42 yards total passing, but they were able to rush for 98 yards as a team. Uh, they've been more consistent today. Again, uh, led in time of possession through a quarter and a half, just haven't been able to put any points on the board. 
On the other side, rushing 91 yards on 15 carries as a team. We didn't see much of Blake Ingleton after that opening quarter, but seven carries for 51 yards right in that seven-yard average that he averages on the season. Yeah, Lindsey Wilson finding out that they could throw the football against his CCU secondary. And so not a lot of uh, need for Blake Ingleton today. As we get ready to kick off the second half, as Lindsey Wilson will get the first first ball to start the second half as they look to build upon a 35 to nothing lead. Lindsey Wilson receiving the kickoff to begin the third quarter. Lamont Miles in on for the kickoff. The lefty puts it into it, a short end over end kick, and it's going to go out of bounds. It was almost touched by the up back, J.P. Porter, the freshman out of Milan, Tennessee. But instead, it goes out of bounds. It'll be a legal procedure, and it's going to be good starting field position for the Blue Raiders. See if they bring Beasley back in to start the second half, and that's exactly what they're going to do. Ingleton's at running back. I really didn't think we would see him the rest of the way, but this just might be a opening drive, and then we're going to start putting in some new people. But until then, Beasley's in that shotgun formation. He's going to hand it off to Ingleton. He hops to the outside, out across the 40-43. Nice shoulder tackle by Larkins, but not before he picks up eight yards. Flag on the play, however. It looks like they're going to get someone from holding. And that's going to come back, Rob. Holding on Lindsey Wilson. So that hold will push him back 10 yards, and it'll be a first down and about 17 to go. Ball, 28-yard line, opening drive of the second half. 14.52 to go. Number six ranked in the country, Lindsey Wilson. Already on top, 35 to nothing as they come corner edge. Bump and run with Render along the near side. Now he backs off to that 10-yard cushion. Beasley's going to hand it off to Ingleton out along the right side. He's got the 30. He's got the 35. Lowers his shoulder, 39, 38 yard line. That's how you finish a run for the big, uh, big 220 pound tailback, Ingleton, out of Queens, New York. Yeah, you wanted to know why he was still out there. You want to make sure that your starting running back doesn't begin to tighten up and things like that. So. With him having only uh, seven carries in the first half, you want to get him a little bit more work before you sit him for the remainder of the game. Second down, we'll call it seven, ball 38. Beasley's in that shotgun where he's been at all night. Now they bring in the jet. They're going to pitch it back. And nice, so I uh, able to get away from the open field tackle was Godluck. Out of Gainesville High School, nice tackle there by Terrence Shipman Jr., 58, after he was able to break the tackle of Daquan Render. Yeah, Shipman getting there, never giving up on the play. The running back was able to break the initial tackle as we take another look at it here. Breaking a, a, a tackle there and then Shipman finishing him off. Danielle Denson also miss a tackle but third down nine to go a chance to get off the field for the eagle defense beasley's in that shotgun ingleton splits to his right from the 31 clean pocket he's got all day now he's going to throw it to the near side Gaines able to haul it in usually you don't see somebody look like you couldn't tell if render slipped or Gaines pushed off but he's able to get the first down and right back to the line comes the blue raiders He's going to hand it off to Ingleton and Hill Jr. able to wrap him up. But give him four more yards. Only his ninth carry. It's almost like they just want to get him some carries 
get to that 15, 16 carry plateau and then put him on the shelf. Yeah, uh, again, that's exactly what they're trying to do. Uh, with him just having those seven carries, that's not enough work for your starting tailback. Second down, seven, ball 47. Ingleton to the left, and he's gonna get it again, hesitates in the hole. Now he's gonna have the first down and a lot more inside the 30, down to the 37 yard line before Lamar Florence and company, but right there you saw being patient. He stopped, kept his feet moving. Then when he saw the hole, he was able to hit it. And what we're seeing right now is Lindsey Wilson just doing what they do best, and that's uh, control the line of scrimmage. And that's not good. 93 Hill, the big man in the middle, just checked out. That's a, that would be a big loss on that front four for the Eagle defense. 11.50 to go in the third quarter. Beasley's all by his lonesome. Now they bring Eagleton into the backfield. And he's gonna take that handoff. He's gonna hop it to the outside. He's got about five, down to the 32. And we have multiple flags along that near side. They may get Ingleton for a face mask on the stiff arm. They got a hold on the offense. And that's gonna push him back and make this a, a first down and a lot longer. And really, that's the only flaw they've really had offensively t tonight. For Lindsey Wilson, it is inopportune penalties. We've already seen two on this drive. But surprisingly, it's where they've been able to do their best work up to this point. Four wide receivers set. Williams checks into the backfield. He split right at Beasley. Now Beasley, he's gonna be able to step up in this throw, and he does. He's got a wide open receiver at the 34, put his foot into the ground, able to make somebody miss, and now there's a big block along the edge. He dies for the pine line. Are they gonna give it to him? Then they do. Touchdown, Godlick. And that makes it 41 to nothing on a 45 yard pitch and catch. It's just like I said moments ago, you don't see most offenses do the types of things we've seen Lindsey Wilson do on third down as we take another look at it yeah, right It's gonna here. be the block at the end. Beasley just doing an excellent job of buying more time, waiting for an open receiver. And then once he gets that pass off to number 15, um, things happen. Beasley's fourth touchdown pass of the night as Daughtry on for the extra point. And the lefty puts it through the uprights. Our new scorer after a 45 yard pitch and catch. Godluck from Beasley is now 42 to nothing in favor of said Blue Raiders. Fourth touchdown pass of the night, 18 on the season to just one interception. And that should be the last that we see of, of him and Ingleton tonight. Yeah, Gottlick showing a little dance fever right there, making uh, quite a few CCU defenders miss and um, ending the night for, I think, most of the starters for Lindsey Wilson. Eleven to eleven to go, remaining. Third quarter as Lindsey Wilson was able to take that kick. It just took three minutes and forty-nine seconds, despite a couple of holding penalties as well. But that was a nice individual play there by Godluck, able to take a seven-yard pass, put his foot in the ground, and a nice block there at the end, which really uh, sprung him loose. His daughter he puts his left foot into this one, a high end over end kick, fielded. By the deep man, able to finally get it across. Jaden Killens, 81. And that's gonna be a good starting field position as Wallendorf will start the second half at quarterback for CCU.
First down, 10 to go, ball 31 yard line at four wide receiver set. Garner Harris split right of Womendorf. Williams split to the very bottom. And they're gonna give it Garner Harris. He might have gotten back to the line of scrimmage and it's gonna be second down and 10 to go from there. And the Lions picking up exactly where they left off in the first half, running that cross dive, trying to find an opening on the left side. Williams split near side once again. Pickett split out top. Jackson Jr. in that slot to the top with Garner Harris. In the backfield, Walmondorf play action that way. He's got a receiver, Jackson Jr., and he's gonna pick up about 14 yards out to the 44 yard line. He took a shot, but he was able to hold on to it. Dangerous throw by Walmondorf, but he's able to complete it. And that's a fresh set of downs, a big first down this offense needed. A much needed first down by CCU as we take another look at it. Warmendorf throwing across his body to the middle of the field, able to complete that pass. Now six of eight for 45 yards for Warmendorf. Williams, Pickett, Jackson Jr., the same trio for Warmendorf. And he's gonna go right across the middle. Once again for the fifth time tonight, He's able to hook up with Mason Chapman, this time seven yards out into Lindsey Wilson territory, down to the 49. Mason Chapman being the favorite target of, target of Warmendorf today, doing an excellent job when given the opportunity. Second down, we'll call it three. Jackson Jr. checks out, pick it. Williams split near side, Cox is the fullback. Kelly, the deep back, and he's gonna get that pitch, trying to get to that far side edge. He's got the first down, down to the 42 yard line. Looked like he might have a little bit more, but a shoestring tackle prevented that. But right there, you see that quick burst by Kelly. That's good to see CCU still playing with a lot of enthusiasm, working on things for next week. Of course, next week they go back on the road. They go down to Cumberland, Tennessee before returning home for back-to-back -back games against Campbellsville and Bethel. As, is, as they open up conference play today, I guess nationally ranked Lindsey Wilson. Womendorf back under center. He's gonna do that quick pitch again, and he's gonna be stood up after about a yard gain. Once again, Bryce Kelly Able to pick up about a yard. Kelly in that first half only had one carry for zero yards, but already here in the second half, already with 10. Second down, nine to go, Wallendorf play action, rolls to his left, and he's got a receiver out of the backfield. Nice hit along the far side, but Noah Cox able to pick up about five yards before Michael DeLone able to wrap him up, and it's gonna be third down, and we'll call it five. And Wallendorf doing an excellent job as we take a look at it right here. Rolling to his left, keeping his eyes downfield, being able to hit that drag route coming across the uh, the middle of the field. Big third down coming up. It's gonna be four down territory. Wallendorf's gonna be under center. Garner Harris is the deep back. Cox is the fullback. Williams split near. Prick, pick it, split out top. And it's gonna be a straight quarterback keep and he's gonna be close to a first down. It's gonna be where this spot is. And I looked at, he's got the first down to the 32 yard line. And once again, we see Wallendorf fake that hand, inside handoff to Cox and just straight quarterback keep. And the signal's been given by the head official. That is a first down, Rob. Again, CCU's offense moving the ball from the 20 to the 20 very well. 
and this will be a great opportunity for, for them to finish a drive. 6.39 to go in the third quarter. Wamondorf trying to lead CCU into the, into the end zone as Garner Harris has just stood up right at the line of scrimmage. Good tackle in the backfield by Isaac Aguero, the freshman out of Knoxville, Tennessee, Hardin Valley. It's a lot of hair for one young man. <laughs> his best Domata Pecco. Give him a yard loss, back out to the 33, second down 11 to go as we approach the six, six minute mark, remaining in the third quarter, opening drive of the second half for CCU. Kind of mirrors that opening drive of, of the football game as well, able to move the ball down the field really at will. Garner Harris remains that deep back in that I formation. This time able to pick up the blitz. Walmendorf running, running, running. And this time he's going to step out of bounds at the 40. And he's going to lose seven yards. It's almost like on that one, that's where you want to see him dump it away down the field. And it's going to set up a third down and long back out to the 41. It's going to be third 19 to be exact. So. Uh, he did an excellent job of uh, avoiding the pressure. But you have to stay mindful that the play is still going on. And instead of running out of bounds, you just want to chuck that thing out of bounds and give yourself a, a better situation on third down. At the end of the day, it's going to be four down territory. Third down, 19 to go, so you don't need to get it all at once. Wallendorf with Garner Harris split right. Single to the bottom is Williams. Duels to the top. Now you're going to get a legal substitution because they broke the huddle with Noah Cox in the backfield. So this is what we've seen. 24. Uh, uh, this is something penalty. that we've seen from CCU all day. They do an excellent job of putting that football down inside the 30 yard line of uh, Lindsey Wilson and somehow end up uh, self destructing. Well, you, you, you see that a lot with a lot of teams. When that field starts to shorten, you get a lot of bodies and a lot uh, closer of the space. Third down, 24 to go. Wallendorf now is going to go back to the shotgun. Duels top single to the bottom is Williams. Garner Harris splits right of Wallendorf. Trying to set up the wide receiver screen with Pickett. Instead, he's going to be thrown down. No gain. Back out to the 46. Tried to set up that wide receiver bubble screen, but with a fourth down and 24, it's going to be punt time. Villarreal on the punt. Not a lot of plays for third and, and 29. So you look for that screen, whether it's a wide receiver screen or a running back screen. And Lindsey Wilson's defense did a good job. Villarreal standing at his own 40. And that one was might have been partially blocked. It's going to take a CCU roll inside the 15, down to the 13-yard line. I wait to see who is now a quarterback for Lindsey Wilson. Appears to be Cameron Dukes, the freshman, out of Bullet Central. Wait to see officially. to exactly who it's going to be. So the freshman now comes in. He takes that shotgun snap and he's going to hand it off to Williams. And he's going to pick up about three yards. So Cameron Dukes takes over and for Dukes, his first game action of the season as Peyton Veraldi is the only other guy that's taken a quarterback throw this season for the Blue Raiders as they try to get the freshmen some snaps. As Tycorian Williams is now the feature back, the 190 pound junior out of South Oldham High School outside Louisville. 
Four wide receivers set, and he's going to hand it off. <laughs> Give him about four yards out to the 20, and it'll be third down and three to go from there. Cameron Thanks. Dukes, a 6'1", 200-pounder, as the bodies are just trying to get separated. Williams lost his helmet, so he checks out. 31, Javen Jones, the senior, out of Cadiz, Kentucky. Trigg County High School checks into the lineup. Fast-moving third quarter, Rob. Three minutes left to go in this third period. And it looks like Lindsey Wilson is going to be satisfied just trying to run this clock out. And that's what going to give it to is Jones. And he's going to be short of the first down. He's going to get wrapped up as the 21-yard line. Good pursuit there by Hill Jr. and company. Also in on the tackle, Alvin Burke. And it's going to be punt time for the Blue Raiders. Montez Lowe on the stop for the Eagles, bringing up fourth down. McNeil Jr. back deep to receive along with Jet and Murph. Hunter Lovell standing at his own six yard line and, and he hesitated, very fortunate that one wasn't blocked and it's gonna take a sidewards bounce out of bounds at the 48 yard line. That's gonna be excellent starting field position for CCU, but on their opening try the second half, they moved it, but really a couple penalties and a quarterback, technically a sack, kind of derailed that last possession. Well, this is gonna be the best starting field position for this CCU offense all day. And so they may be able to come away with some points here. They are officially going to mark the ball at the 50-yard line. Walmendorf remains at quarterback. Garner Harris still the tailback. Pickett split out top as they bring in three extra offensive linemen. Cox the fullback. Legal substitution. They're going to say we have 12 men on the field for CCU. It looks like Cox got banged up as one too many hog mollies made their way onto the field. And that's going to push it back. So it'll be first down now in 15. Well, that happens sometimes, actually, Rob, when you're trying to get some of these other guys some playing time. The regulars think that they're still in there, so they go running out when they hear offense. So Pickett split out top. Chapman's your tight end to the top. Kelly's the deep back, and instead, Wallendorf's going to keep it himself. He's going to get about three yards out to the 48 before he's finally wrapped up by Aaron Sipple, the redshirt freshman out of Berea, Kentucky, via Madison Southern High School. Kelly remains the deep back, same formation with Walmendorf under center. This time they're going to go play action. They're going to swing it back out to Chapman. He's going to lose. He's going to pick up a yard out to the 49 yard line. It's going to be third down and 11. And that's good gap responsibility, able to stay home there by the Blue Raider defense. Yeah, you kind of put yourself in a, a one-sided affair when all of your receivers are lined up on the left as we take a look at it here. Defensive back did a great job of coming off of the man that he was covering to make that tackle. And a really good open field tackle. It was designed nice to be able to roll out. You get that defense flowing right. You hit him back on the left. If that defensive corner isn't there to make that tackle, that's going to be a big play. Instead, it's going to be third down and 11 to go. And now Wallendorf's going to call a timeout, their first timeout. Of the second half, that timeout comes with just 21 seconds remaining. It's a big third down and 11 coming up. Of course, they started the drive right there on the 50, but you got to believe they'd be able to pick up five, six yards. They're, it's going to be go time for this offense. Yeah, definitely. You're, you're down uh, 42 to zero. And at this point, you have absolutely nothing else to lose. So why not? If you get five yards here, you go for it on that fourth and five. 
We've seen it work early in the first half when they kind of ran that delayed draw there with Garner Harris and they also did the, the quarterback keep. You get the linebackers out of the box, really opens up the center of the field. So really the OEC really has a multitude of plays if you're thinking that this is four down territory. I would like to see him uh, maybe go to Mason Chapman again. He's had a really successful afternoon, and when you've got a hot hand, you've got to ride that hot already hand sometimes. six catches already for, for the big tight. Only had four coming in, and, but he's been a real big weapon across the middle today which you, you know how it is as being a former head coach. You get that middle of the field to open, it really opens up the rest of your offense. Third down, 11 to go. Kelly's the deep back, and then Walmendorf got tripped up by his center as he came away. He's going to lose four back out to the 45, and it's going to be punt time for CCU as Villarreal in on the punt. That's unfortunate there. You know, sometimes that center or the guard takes that first step back. Able, he stepped on Wommendorf, and that'll do it for the third quarter here from Robert Taft High School. Our score at the end of three. It's the Blue Raiders 42, and the CCU Eagles nothing. After Villarreal, we'll get another look at Cameron Dukes. The red shirt freshman, but you got to believe they want to get him start get some game time because you get to start thinking about life after your senior quarterback. Yeah, they're, and they're four games in, and he hasn't taken any snaps before today. So you definitely want to get him in in a game like this uh, and get him some uh, some experience. Of course, Viraldi just a uh, – Veraldi, just a sophomore himself out of out of adult Georgia, adult high school. So that's going to be an interesting uh, quarterback battle in themselves. But right now they're going to ride that senior for about six more games as Villarreal in on the punt, able to get this one away. And it's gone. that ball's loose, but able to pick it up on the hop. Now he's able to make a couple guys miss a stiff arm, but a nice tackle there at the 21. Anderson Jr. on the return, but that might be a face mask on the offense. As Bill Bear Jones able to wrap him up. Wait to see who this one is on, but with that stiff arm, look like he might have gotten some face masks. I think that's going to go against CCU. He brought him down, it looks like, maybe by his face mask. So you're going to want to tackle on 15 to the end of that run. That's exactly what it's going to be, 15 yards. That's going to push it out to the 35-yard line. And now Lindsey Wilson's going to have very good starting field position. Of course, very fortunate was a Quentin Brown that that ball bounced right back up into his belly. First down, 10 to go. Williams is the tailback, and he's going to take it. He's going to get maybe a yard or two. Able to get it on the stop it was Michael Marble. Looks like at this point for uh, Lindsey Wilson, they've made a lot of subs. Their offensive linemen are different at this point as well. Jones now checks in to the tailback, 31. Jones in that first half, just one carry for eight yards. Cameron Dukes took over for Beasley after he threw four touchdown passes. Now he rolls to his right, he's gonna keep it himself. He's gonna fall down to 41, but more importantly, he fell down in bounds. That's a smart play by the freshman. Definitely a smart play. He could have uh, ran out of bounds and stopped the clock being wise with the football, he slides and keeps that clock running. Third down, 4-0 for the Blue Raider offense. CCU looking for another three and out. Dukes in the shotgun formation. He's got Williams split to his right, and they're going to hit him on that quick pick. Actually, that's Jones. And he's got the first down and a lot more inside the 45, 42-yard line. 
And right there is a big play by Jones, the senior tailback out of Cadiz, Kentucky, able to pick up the first down. Excellent third down call right there. They've run that speed uh, sweep a lot today and have had success with it no matter who's been running it. Jones split left of Duke, shotgun formation, 12.45 to go in the fourth quarter. Jones is going to take it, shakes and bakes his way, but it's going to be for not. That one's coming back due to a hold. Would have been a gain of eight, but it went for not. Anytime that head official throws that flag in the center, you already know what it is. <laughs> yeah, he's the back judge, and that's his job to watch those holding calls as well as protect the quarterback. The one complaint that the coaching staff is going to have is in regards to that's the, the fifth holding penalty now against this offense. Going to push the ball back to the 48-yard line. It's going to be first down and 20 to go from there as we're under 12.30 to go in the fourth quarter. Jones remains the tailback. Duke in the shotgun. And it's going to be a free play. He just throws this one up. Didn't matter as he was trying to hook up with Quentin Brown. It was a free play, and it's going to be a first down and 15. I'm really impressed with Cameron Duke's knowledge of the game. He saw the, the defender jump off sides and immediately knew that he had a free play. A lot you, of quarterbacks are pause. You could tell they practiced that because we yeah. saw Beasley do the same thing. But to see that out of a freshman, just calmly took a step back. Right down the sideline he went. Duke, shotgun, Jones split to his left again. Three wide receivers set, 12-17 to go in the fourth quarter. And I think we got a snap infraction this time. We definitely do offsides against the center. Can't, can't flinch on that once you touch your, once you get your hand on the ball there by the center, you can see the flinch before he snapped it. So we're right back to where we started about three plays ago. First down and 20. This time Duke's going to throw it. He's looking to set up the screen pass to Jones, and he's got a bunch of green in front of him. Picks up the initial 10 off the hole, plus five more. Ball's loose, but they're going to say he was out of bounds at the 38-yard line. Almost was a big play there by the CCU defense. Big hit there along the far side by Jones. Uh, as we take another look at it right here, you're going to see Jones running this uh, running back screen to the left side, finishing the play very well. Making it a second and very convertible six. Second down, six to go. They're going to hit Jones on that. Actually, that's back to Williams on that quick hitter. It's going to be close to a first down. He might be about a yard short. We'll call it third and about one to go from there. Lindsey Wilson has a core of running backs, Rob, that I'm really impressed with. A nice one, two, three punch. Williams remains the tailback, split right at Duke, third down, one to go inside of 11 minutes. And that's who they're going to give it to. He's got the first down, down to the 32. He needed two, he got one. And we got another stoppage, and that's about the fourth helmet that's come off so far tonight for Lindsey Wilson, this time Quentin Brown, the freshman out of Lexington Lafayette High. Maybe they may want to go with a different type of chin strap or something. Maybe they should just snap it. <laughs> Williams and Jones split each side. Williams right, Jones left, a Duke and the shotgun as he looks at the play clock, waiting for it to get down to five. Gives it to Williams, circle buttons his way right into a tackle. Able to wrap him up, big old 58, Terrence Simpson Jr. No gain, second down, 10 to go. The old counter play. Now we got two more stables of running backs checking in as 
Zach Meisel checks into the football game along with Xavier Abernathy. Abernathy is going to be the deep back. Of course, Abernathy had that big touchdown at the end of the second quarter, that 13-yard run. And he's going to take this snap, hops to the outside, inside 30, 25, give him 24. Third down about, call it a short two, long one. You're, we're just watching Lindsey Wilson impose their will at this point. It's wasting no time. They come out in a quick hitter. That ball is loose. Trying to hop on it. CCU, and they have the football at the 29-yard line. Able to turn over the Blue Raiders, and they're going to take over. First and 10 to 29. They bobbled this pitch, but good heads-up play along the far side by Daquan Render, able to put his shoulder in there and come up with the loose ball. Uh, as we take a look at it here, Render really giving chase to get that football. Actually, Quincy Gilbert. Okay, Gilbert. Excellent job by Gilbert to get uh, give chase and get that football back for his offense. Siminski now back at a quarterback. We saw him for a little bit in the first half. Just one of two. Of course, that one went for 11 yards as he hit Chapman across the middle. Now, Shimmy is in the shotgun with duels to the bottom. And he's going to go that way. He's got a receiver. Nice play there along the edge. Almost thought that might have been a face mask as he hit Jaden Killens. Give him five yards out to the 34. Gillen's doing a great, great job of concentrating and bringing that in as we take a look at it right here. Simple out route right there, but it was in between two defenders. He was able to concentrate, bring that in, and pick up about five yards. Second down, five to go, and inside nine minutes to go, fourth quarter. CCU trying to get on the board, down 42 to nothing. Shimmy with Kelly to his right. Lindsey Wilson showing blitz off of both edges. And here they come. Now Shimmy's rolling to his right, throws it up, and nobody was home. That might be intentional grounding. He was still in the pocket. Definitely still in the pocket. And instead, I'm going to call it third down. Very fortunate. Might have been inside the tackles. But it's going to be third down and five to go. Good opportunity for your second string guys to get some work. You don't change your offense or your defensive uh, playbook because you really want to see what these cats can do if you have any injuries. Shimmy with Kelly to his left. And he's got a receiver there. He's got Chapman again out across the 45 in uh, Blue Raider territory. High steps the guy down to the 41 yard line. Big third down the conversion there for Shimmy in the offense. I talked about Chapman two series ago and I wanted to see them go back to him. He's found a way to get open today and make plays like this. Good read there by Shimmy. Kelly split to his right as they bring now trips near side. And he wants to swing it out. He's got his receiver out there on the edge, trying to make a play inside the 35, 34 yard line. Once again, Killings. And that's going to give him about seven yards. Nice pick up there on first down. Give him six, second down four, 7.35 to go. This time it's going to be Kelly. Makes the first man miss. He's going to be close to a first down as he was able to take Corey Clems for about an extra two yards. And it's going to be a first down down to the 31 yard line. And another fresh set of downs for the Eagle offense as once again they're knocking on that 30 yard line door. And Shimmy uh, orchestrating this offense pretty well here on this drive. Down inside the 35 yard line. Anderson Jr. split near side. Kelly split left 
of Szymanski. He wants to go left. Now he's going to step up in the pocket. He's going to be able to run. He's got a running lane inside the 25, down to the 22-yard line, 21. And that's going to be close to another first down. It's going to be just short, about a half of football. It's going to be second down and one to go from there. Really impressed with Shimmy's poise as the uh, quarterback sitting in the pocket looking for the receiver. He didn't see anything he liked downfield, so he tucked the ball and got enough for a first down. One thing I did, his eyes stayed down the field the whole time before yes. he tucked it. The rush came up the field. The, oh, as you said, the middle of the field was wide open. He took advantage of that for a gain of nine. Kelly split left, 6.35 to go in the fourth quarter. Oak Hills knocking on the red, on the red zone. Bad snap, Kelly, and that's a face mask. And that's going to be 15 yards, and they're going to enter the red zone for the first time tonight as Kelly had his face mask about ripped off by Streeter, the freshman, out of Fern Creek High School in Louisville. Yeah, that's going to bail uh, CCU out right there because the uh, quick pitch didn't work for them, but they're going to pick up 15 yards on the play in a first down. Right there, just a bad snap. Just a bad snap obvious face mask penalty. So that's gonna push it inside the 20 as CCU hits the red zone for the first time. And it's gonna put the ball down around the 10 yard line, officially 11 yard line. 12 yard line, first down, Eagles. CCU trying to get on the board, 6.25 to go. We'd like to see Chapman run a little waggle route here Kelly the deep back, Szymanski under center. And he's gonna roll to his right, and he's gonna throw it into the back of the end zone. He's got Chapman, touchdown, touchdown. Eagles! Szymanski finds Chapman, his eighth catch of the night, and the Eagles are on the board as it's now 42 to six. Chapman has been the go-to guy all day long, and this is how you reward him. Get him the ball in the end zone, he does a good job finding open space in the middle of the field and making that catch. Trey Miles on to attempt the extra point. Lamont Miles in on for the extra point from the hold of Szymanski. Of course, his first collegiate Touchdown pass for Shimmy out of John Glenn High School in Westland, Michigan. And the extra point is good, our new score. After a 12-yard pitching catch from Shemansky to Chapman, it's now Lindsey Warren 42, CCU 7. Always remember your first one. Exactly what the CCU offense needed, able to cap off that drive on a nice pass. And really, Chapman, he's had a big afternoon, the tight end, really across the open. He's had his way the entire game. And you like to see maybe moving forward, that's going to be your new go-to guy, really open up things for the entire offense when you're able to use that tight end the way they can. Yeah, he's been a bright spot today for the CCU offense. And maybe they found something in this, uh, in this system that they can really get better at. Fielded by the up back, out across the 30, 35, 40, and he's got some running room, does Abernathy along the far side, and it's gonna be excellent starting field positions. He steps out of bounds at the 25. But you see a lot now in the NFL, they want those two tight ends. They really stretch the field and really open things up for your run game and your wide receivers as well. Of course, uh, a, team, a bandwagon you jumped on a long time ago, the New England bandwagon, they were able to do that. <laughs> make that two wide, two tight end set real popular. <laughs> the tight end, <laughs> the tight end <laughs> has always been a big part of uh, offenses uh, that have been successful because you have to be able to run the football and that tight end gives you that extra offensive lineman, if you will, to help out on the running game. But he's just good enough to be able to catch the ball as well. 
Now Dukes wanting to go to the outside. He's able to do so. He hooks up with his tight end, Quentin Brown, the freshman, for a quick six yards. You know I kid because I care. <laughs> Second down, four to go. Clock continues to run. So we're at the 5.30 mark. And now they're going to fake it. Now they're going to actually are going to hand it to Jones. Jones is going to pick up about three yards. It's going to be about a yard short. Call it third down and one. They got to reach the 15. Four yards short. What's really good to see, Rob, is that both of these offenses are systems that utilize their tight end but also run a two-back set you have so many teams today that's running the spread offense with four wide receivers single setback both of these teams are running a dual running back with the tight end set good to see that jones the deep back and he's going to take the handoff 10 7 5 and it's going to be goal to go from there officially six yard line goal to go 453 to go Jones, the shiftiest running back of the four or five that they have, and he really dances his way to first down yardage. Goal to go, four wide receivers set. Jones remains the tailback split right at Duke, and Duke's going to throw it. And he's going to step up in the pocket. He can run it if he wants to. He said he throws it in the back of the end zone, and that's a beautiful catch. Able to get his hands underneath it. Was Brown for the Blue Raider touchdown. Actually, sorry, 20, Gregory. Lindsey Wilson not taking their foot off the gas pedal, even under five minutes left to play. As we take another look at it here, throwing the football into the end zone where at this point most teams are running the clock out. Speaking of first touchdowns, that was Duke's first collegiate touchdown pass himself. Out of Shepherdsville, Kentucky is Daughtery. Plenty of leg on this one. And our new score after a six-yard pitch and catch is now Lindsey Warren, 49. And CCU, 7. CCU will get one more chance. You got 4.30 to go. Offense was able to do some good things. You talk about building momentum into the next week. And you got to think of if Shimmy can keep this up, maybe you see, you know, him get maybe a few more snaps, and then you're kind of into that dual quarterback when you have Walman go going so much extra things, punting, kick returning. You, you can only, only take so much, and it's good to know that you got a guy now that has reps a lot better from this week compared to last week when he struggled. But a lot of that, you hadn't seen game action in about a year and a half since it's high school. Uh, game's a lot faster. Kind of saw that able to rush himself. Nerves got the best of him. They really settled down here on that last drive. I thought he did a great job on that last drive, Shimmy did. And you want to give these kids an opportunity to show what they can do in a game like this, and he's taking full advantage of that. High end over end kick. Fielded by Kelly out across the 15, 20, 25. Good starting field position there. Actually, that was Dawson Sloan. No, that was Kelly. And it was going to be good starting field position at the 25-yard line for Shimmy in the offense. Four twenty-four to go, fourth quarter. Shimmy leads his offense back onto the field with that trip wide receiver set to the top. Kelly's going to be split left of Samansky. And that's who exactly who they're going to give it to, and he's going to be thrown down. Might have gotten back to the original line of scrimmage, hoping able to throw him down to the freshman linebacker. Lindsey Wilson almost positive uh, that CCU is going to try to run the clock out, and, and now they're playing with six or seven in the box every play. Flea flicker. Flea 
And we got movement everywhere. Shimmy was trying to redirect some traffic. The left side move included Chapman. And that's going to push it back five yards. It'll be second down, 15 to go from there. 3.46 to go here in the fourth. New running back now checking in. Anthony Brown, 27 now in the backfield. Looking for his first carry of the night as Shimmy takes that shotgun snap. Play action to him. He's going to throw it out. He's got a receiver. And that one was almost picked. As Arius Phillips read that one, did the sophomore out of Owensboro High School. Almost jumped that route. Shimmy was trying to hook up once again with Killings, but he was able to come off his guy. Jumped on that route. Very fortunate that one wasn't picked off. Yeah, Phillips jumping all over that pass, knowing and reading the uh, quarterback's eyes, knowing where he wanted to go with the football, and almost came up with a pick six. Big third down. Kelly checks back into the backfield. He's going to be split left of Shimmy. Trips top, single to the bottom is Villarreal. Now he's going to do that quick hitter to Killings along the far side, trying to get some blocks. He's going to be about six yards short of a first down. Call him out at the 29-yard line, and it's going to be punt time for the Eagles with just 3.15 to go in the fourth quarter. Billy Real back on to punt. Quentin Brown back deep to receive again. Able to get this one off a high end over end kick and Brown's going to field it at the 34. He's got a lane to the far side. He's got a lot of green in front of him. He's just got to beat the kicker and he's able to do so. And he's into the end zone. Touchdown, Lindsey Wilson. That's a 65 yard punt return for the Raiders. And with 2.34 to go, they extend the lead now 55 to seven. As we take another look at it here, this is one of those punts that are returnable. You don't give your, uh, re your coverage guys an opportunity to get down the field to actually cover the punt. Lindsey Wilson doing an excellent job of setting up those blocks and giving him that, that sideline, and he takes it in for the score. Good snap, good hole, plenty of leg. Our new score after a 65-yard punt return. It's now the Blue Raiders 56 and the Home Eagles 7. Two thirty-four to go in the football game. We're going to get one last look at the CCU offense. Daughtery toes it up at the 35. Kelly back deep to receive, standing at his own two yard line. The lefty, another high end over end kick, and he could have let that one go out of bounds. He touches it at the 11 yard line. And that's where Shimmy and the offense are gonna start their latest drive with just 2.34 to go in the fourth quarter. Now this is why you want to give these young guys an opportunity to play in situations like this because now uh, him touching that football at the 11-yard line doesn't mean as much. You can teach him and so that when they're in better situations, he knows to allow that football to go out of bounds. No better experience than game, game exactly. experience. He's just trying to make a play. Shimmy's exactly. in the shotgun. 
Brown remains the tailback. He split to his left as Shimmy swings it out to Killings along the right. Able to hit that wide receiver screen for about nine yards. Give him the 20-yard line. And it'll be second down one to go from there. Yeah, Shizzy likes to throw that bubble pass out there and allow his, uh, his receiver to catch and run. Brown still looking for his first carry. Now he's going to get it. Lowers his shoulder, and he's going to lose a couple yards. Back out to the 18, 17. It's going to be third down and four to go from there as we're approaching the 92nd mark as Kelly checks back in. That was the old option play, Rob. Actually haven't slow. seen that run in a long time. Most of them were read options now. This was the old school option, and that takes a lot of practice to run that play. That was back when you were a little young and they didn't even know uh -huh. what the vertical pass was yet. <laughs> that still might have been a 15-yard penalty for an incompletion. <laughs> Sloan split left to Shimmy. Takes that shotgun snap. Now he's being flushed out looking for Chapman. Over his head, he had an open killing. He just didn't have time to see him. And there was a flag in the area of roughing the passer. And that's exactly what it's going to be as Shimmy took a shot back at the five, and that's going to be an automatic first down with 69 seconds to go. Yeah, just not a smart play. You, you have him under pressure there, and, and you're, you're forcing him to throw the football away, but then you go and commit a 15-yard penalty that will give them an automatic first down. But you also got to know score and time when making that play as well. After the penalty, ball comes back out to the 32-yard line. It'll be first down 10, trip to the top. Haley now the tailback. And instead, Shimmy takes it out of his belly, keeps it himself, and going to be stopped for no gain. Tripped up on the play by Shea Martin, the redshirt freshman out of Columbia, Kentucky, as we're under si inside of the final minute. And for all intents and purposes, could be the final play as we're now inside 40 seconds. Shimmy getting an opportunity to play good minutes today. Haley now is gonna split right. And it's going to be a straight quarterback keep, and Shimmy just took a big shot. Latrell Streeter and company hit him, and that should be the final play of the football game. A football game that saw Lindsey Wilson really just capitalize on the big play. Well, started off on that fumble recovery on a good CCU drive to start the game. They just couldn't capitalize off of it. A couple of deep passes by Beasley on his way to a four-touchdown night. Really, that was the difference in this football game. A lot of big plays, I think, in the first half um, by Lindsey Wilson that dictated the way that this football game was going to go in. CCU getting caught up in quicksand today and just not able to get out of it. Able to get some good experience on offense. You're able to get Shimmy some snaps, and that should bode, bode well for the future as well. So a lot of positives, though, you could take out of this for CCU as well. Yeah, a lot of positives to take away from it. The defensive line, I thought, played exceptionally well. Shimmy getting good minutes uh, to play. He'll be a lot more confident the next time they call his number. So they got a lot to build on. That was good working with you again, Coach. Always, Rob. All right, once again, our final score from Robert Taft High School is Lindsey Wilson, 56, CCU 7. Make sure you're joining us in two weeks as Cumberland comes, or as Campbellsville comes into Robert Taft High School to tingle with CCU. Once again, for the coach, Tony Bray, for Tony Sorez. I am Rob Roberts. Until next time, good night, everybody.